Hello, my name's Kieran. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about why I decided to study at university, the course that I study, what it's like to be a student and what I plan on doing after I've finished at university as well. So this is a picture of me when I was in year 10 and the reason that I've included this is because it was around that time when you start making decisions about things like GCSEs which really start to steer the path on where you're going to go. Um, but other than that, I'm currently a third year history student. So that means that I've basically finished my degree now. I'm all the way through on the other end of it. I'm from Newcastle under Lyme and I'm a commuter student. So I go to Keel University um, and I just basically live at home and then go into university to study and things like that. One of the main reasons I decided to do that was because of my lovely dogs um, who were like my children and I couldn't live without them. So I decided that living at home was probably the best option for me. When I said about being a commuter student, so this is what my commute looks like. It's about two and a half miles, um, but students commute from all kinds of different distances. We have students that commute from Derby, Manchester, Birmingham, all kinds of different areas. It really just depends on what they want to do. But equally, a lot of people and most people decide to actually live at university. So it's quite an interesting one to decide whether or not you want that extra bit of independence or whether you want to live at home for a bit longer. So. This is a bit of a cringy slide where it says my journey to higher education, but everyone does have a different route into higher education. So when you're watching this presentation, some of the things might not apply to you, but some of them might as well. Just keep in mind that this isn't a do this to get here. It's just trying to inform you a little bit about what it's been like for me, but you might have a completely different plan going forward. Um, and if you've got any questions um, that aren't answered in this presentation, feel free to get in touch with the High Horizons team or individual universities as well and ask them all the questions about anything that you have. So my school options. So back in 2012, when I was choosing my GCSEs, which seems like a very long time ago now, um, I decided to go for things that I mostly enjoyed. So the ones I enjoyed were music and food and nutrition. Um, I ended up doing French as well because we had to take a language, but I was absolutely awful at it. My French is still abysmal to this day. Um, I was good at music. I decided to do that rather than history because I was told I would have to try very hard to do well in history. And that wasn't sounding like something that appealed to me at that time. And food and nutrition. Um, I thought I was a good cook. However, I could just bake. Everything else was burnt on the outside and raw in the middle. So I soon learned that I wasn't as skilled at that as I thought I was. So when it came round to deciding on A-levels, I went for a bit of a change. So I decided to go for English literature, religious studies, history and general studies, all of which were very essay based. I used to think I was quite a practical, sciencey person, but as it went on, I realised that actually that wasn't the case. So I decided to change my focus a little bit. And then after A-levels, well, after ASs, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, end of year 12. Um, and we got told at school that we could go to university open days and have a look around if we wanted to. But I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to study. So I asked myself the question, what's next? What do I want to do after this? And so with that question, um, I thought the best way of doing that was to ask myself, what job do I want to do in the long run? So these are some of the options that I came up with. Police officer, teacher, um, paramedic, member of parliament, um, work in the civil service who um, basically make the government run and they put in place what um, the government want to do, basically. And of course, you're a millions winner because who doesn't want to win that? Um, unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. So I'm still here with my history degree. Um, but what all of these jobs have in common is that you either need a degree to do them or a degree is really helpful um, when you do that job. So things like police and teaching, paramedic, all three of those, you need a degree to do that job. Um, civil service, you don't have to have a degree to join the civil service, but you can get promoted much quicker if you do have a degree. And Member of Parliament, it's something like 90% of um, MPs in the 2015 Parliament had a degree. It is reducing now, um, but it's still quite almost a prerequisite to get into those kind of positions to have a degree so it's always a useful thing to have and it builds up skills that are useful in those jobs as well and that is why I decided on doing history because it just built up so many different skills basically um, I had no idea what particular career I wanted to go down and for me um, not sort of focusing on something too soon meant that I could still think whilst I was studying as well so we finally arrived um, 
at me studying at university. Um, and these pictures all say something that I learned in my first few weeks. So the first one, the picture of the laptop, I had a MacBook Air 11 inch, which is a very small screen when you spend all day reading, which is what we do in history, do a lot of reading, a lot of writing. Um, so I think the main thing I would say is definitely ask students what equipment they have, because that can really help you into sort of not making the mistakes other people did. So I find it much better to have a bigger laptop so that I can read things much easier. The second one is a picture of um, a university ID card. And I did not find out until second year that you got a discount if you paid for food using a university ID card. So you could save about 10 percent. So I should have asked that question as well. The third one, um, the picture of the lecture theatre with all those chairs in. So before I started at university, I didn't really know what the difference between a lecture and a seminar was. Um, and a lecture like that kind of room does not really suit to making friends. And that is something that people don't really think about when they start at university. They think that they're going to go to their first lecture um, sit down and meet their best friend for life in that lecture um, and they will be the best man at their wedding and all these kind of things but lectures aren't the best place to make friends because you're just sat there listening to someone talk to you for an hour two hours so a seminar which is um, a smaller group um, class kind of thing is much better for that and um, because you have to work together in small groups and you get to sort of really chat with each other rather than just sitting listening to someone else and having maybe five minutes at the beginning and end to talk to each other. And the last one is the picture of the Oxford campus notebook. And the reason I include that is because I lied to myself and said, I'm going to just write out notes and then I'll tie them up later on. And I wrote out really poor notes that were just a mess. And if you think you're yeah, going to type up those notes afterwards, you're probably lying to yourself. So my top tip is to just do your notes properly the first time and save yourself time in the long run. So that when it comes around to exams and essay writing, you can really easily find what you've written rather than um, trying to trawl through um, page after page of really disorganised notes. And the reason the campus notebook is on there is because it's really high quality paper, so you can highlight it afterwards as well when you're revising. So welcome week or freshers week is something that is really important in the first few weeks at university. Um, Freshers Fair, which is that picture there, is where you can go to the society sign up and get a load of free stuff as well. Um, but the main thing to remember is that all the people in that picture are there because they want to join a club or a sports team that is an interest that they have and because they want to meet new people and make friends. And these are the kind of places where you can really meet people who have a similar interest to you because you can be put in halls with eight people maybe and you don't have any shared interests. But if you go to a society or a club, then you know you've got shared interests because your shared interest is the club or society. And then there's the classic students union events that go on. So it could be a club night or a comedy night or a craftoon where you can spend the afternoon doing some crochet and things like that. There's all kinds of different things that go on. So definitely look into those different universities, what activities they offer during Freshers and Welcome Week. And the last one, the student services drop in, is something that's actually really important that students might not think about, which is that when you go to university, um, it is not the end of the support that you get. So my parents always said, once you're gone, that's it. Um, you'll be on your own. Good luck to you. But student services teams are always there to help. Um, and they have different. So at Keel, as an example, they have different teams for different things. So they have um, a money and welfare team to deal with any money or welfare issues, dyslexia and disability support. So if you have any additional needs that need sorting out, that team's there to help as well. And there's all kinds of different things with international students as well. So at Keel, they have a daily drop in. So if you have any issues, you can go to the drop in and they can help you and offer you advice as well, which is really useful. And accessing those resources during the first few weeks can actually make all the difference if you've got worries or concerns and they can get you sorted out as well. So a little bit about my course then. So these are all A-level history textbooks um, and they're all by individual authors like Michael Tilbrook, um, and all these different kind of historians who've put this textbook together. It's the only thing you probably need for the course. That's what you need to learn. And that's it. But that isn't what history is about at degree level. So I include maths textbooks just to make the maths people feel a bit welcome as well. I've got nothing against maths people, but I just love history. These are all books that I used in my first year or my second year, actually. And the reason I include it is because unlike those textbooks that were on the other slide, um, all these different books 
they're on different topics, most of them, but the formation of a persecuting society, Europe in the High Middle Ages, the corruption of angels and the medieval church all look at the same topic, but from a different angle and slant. So it can be really useful as a historian to understand that people have different opinions. And that isn't something that is really shown in the A-level history textbooks or in more popular history books as well. And you can really get down to understanding why people have different opinions and seeing how people's arguments go against each other um, and that's what I really enjoy it's this sort of uncertainty but being able to make your own decision on the evidence that you've got so an example of this is the drama that is in this little excerpt so I use this in my dissertation which is the final year piece that I've written which is about 10,000 words and I've written it on heresy and medieval Europe which is something that I would never have thought about before I started um, but this is the quote that I really like it is with some regret that I write the following. I normally like a good argument, and there is nothing I like better than to argue about the year 1000, even when the counter arguments are silly, ill informed, and misconceived. And then the author, who is Richard Lands, the historian, has um, put footnotes in those little numbers and referenced exactly who he thinks is silly, ill informed, and misconceived, so that you can really follow his arguments, understand why he thinks that. But it's also just very dramatic, and that's what I love about history. It's the drama. Historians are always falling out about things, and there's never the last word on something. Something always sparks off another debate, and that is one of the key things that I really enjoy about it about it and about most subjects actually at university level is there's always debate going on there's always changing evidence which is something that can be really exciting to look at as well so this is quite a boring slide for most people but i always had in my head that when i went to university there'd be one exam at the end of the year and that would be it but that isn't how it works at all so this is my favorite kind of module structure that we have so a group presentation is quite common um some people really hate them because they don't want to do a presentation but i really enjoy them because they're a really good way of learning the topic for yourself when you're teaching it um really good for revision because you'll remember what you've taught better Participation in seminar discussion. So that is basically getting marks for your um, talking in a seminar. So um, you putting across your opinions and talking to others and having a sort of an argument, but not a raging row, just having maybe a disagreement of opinion over what you've read um, and having that in a really um, academic way rather than just saying, I hate you and you're an idiot and sort of getting that um, nuanced opinions out. And then the last one is a classic 2000 word essay, which when I before I started, I thought that sounds like so many words. But the further you go through the course, the more you realise that actually that isn't a lot of words to get everything that you want in. So you get really good at condensing information and picking out the really key points so that you can get all your argument in there to a really high standard as well. So my favourite building as a history student is the library. Um, all the universities have different libraries. Um, they have different styles of libraries. Some of them are all silent study areas. Some of them are more flexible. Some of them have less books than others. So definitely go and have a look around and see if they suit your style of learning. Because I cannot work in absolute silence. I get really distracted by how quiet it is, which doesn't sound like it makes much sense. Um, so I really like somewhere that's sort of got a bit of low level noise, a bit of chatter, but not people sort of swinging um, from the ceilings. So that is trying to find the right study space for that was really important for me. And looking inside the university library on open days and visits and asking about what it's like was really useful for me. So my other favourite building at Keel is Keel Hall. And the reason I included this slide is because when you think of university, people have different opinions and pictures in the head. And I didn't really think about the difference between a campus university where everything's all in one place. It's usually quite green um, and outside of a city centre compared to a city university like Manchester, where it's spread out across the city centre. And you might have to get a bus between sites and the accommodation isn't next to the university. Um, and that is something that you might want to think about as well, is do I actually want to study a campus and get the sort of community feel or would I prefer to move to a city and have sort of the big bustling atmosphere if that makes sense as well. And it's not always sunny so this is my other top tip this is our sports field in winter when I was walking in one day and as a student we always have to save money so I say get yourself a nice big coat in the sales before you go to university this is my favourite coat for winter and I feel like this is the best bit of advice I can give you is always wrap up warm when you're going around because you might be out all day um, and it's best to stay warm rather than having to warm up when you get home. 
So I was saying before about a campus versus city university, but also thinking about transport links. So even though I live at home, it's really important for me that I went to university somewhere where I was able to travel around a bit and get out and about. So Kiel is really centrally located um, to go to places like Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool. So that's something you might want to think about. Do you actually want to go out and about a bit, um, move around, go to different cities on days out? Uh, it might be that you want to go to somewhere where it's completely in the middle of the countryside, like Harper Adams, which is in between sort of Shrewsbury and Kiel. Um, or you might just want to go straight to a city, like I said before, like Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, Nottingham, Sheffield, Derby, all these kind of places. But definitely look at how you're going to get there, how you're going to get back and those kind of things as well. So this is the motto that a lot of students have. When the student loan drops, you head out to the shops. So these are pictures of the Trafford Centre and Cheshire Oaks, where me and my sister usually went when we had our student loan. Um, but that is something that you have to do with caution because you will probably not have had that much money put into your bank account in one time before, but that money has to last you. So this is quite a boring bit, but budgeting is really important because if you can budget well, then you won't have to worry about money the whole time you're at university. So my three top tips for budgeting, stick to a weekly amount. So I did this by having two bank accounts and I pay money weekly using a standing order from one to the other. So I knew exactly how much I had to spend and I wouldn't overspend. Um, if I underspent, I just keep it in the bank account and then I knew how much I had to spend on things that I might want to buy that weren't budgeted for. The second thing is monitor your spending. So it's so easy to sort of get your phone and just Apple Pay everywhere and get your contactless card and just tap it. Um, and before you know it, you've spent £100 on nothing. Um, I'm awful for doing that. And so I find it really difficult to monitor my spending. So the best thing to do is either keep track of what you've bought or get um, a bank account that will send you a notification on your phone every time you buy something. So I've got a Monzo account. And if I buy something in a shop, I get a notification to my phone that says exactly how much I've spent. So then I know in my head that that's the amount of money rather than just scanning my contactless card without even thinking about it. And the last thing I always say is don't spend all your money in one week. It's so easy to think about that amount of money and just spend it. And then you have to live on rice and beans for the rest of your life. It's not very common at all to happen. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone doing it, but it's something that could happen if you lost control of yourself. So always keep in mind that that money has to last you. Having said that, though, if you do come under any kind of monetary issues, I said before about student services and money and welfare teams. So they can offer hardship loans as well and bursaries if you really need money urgently. So you're not on your own. You're not going to go bankrupt. So definitely um, just keep that in mind that if you do come into hardship, there is always support out there. And these are Martin Lewis's tips. I think mine are better, but I'm going to include them anyway. Um, so key questions to ask. Do I need it? Can I afford it? Will I use it? And is it worth it? So that's a way of just sort of monitoring your spending and making sure you're not spending on things that you don't actually need as a student as well. So one thing that's been really important to me in my time at uni has been being a student ambassador. Um, one of the main reasons is because it's a job that pays. So um, it's really flexible. So you can get paid when you're not studying to do all kinds of different things. Um, so that's a life size game of operation that we did once. Um, clerical support. I'm on the phone there. That is a faked up photo. There was no one on the phone. Um, helping during university enrollment and welcome. And then graduation ceremonies, open days, offer holidays. There's all kinds of things you can get involved with. And it's a really good way of, like I said, earning a bit of money to help with the budgeting I was talking about before and it also provides loads of really useful experience because there's so many different things that you can do so definitely um, look into doing this kind of role when you go if you go to university and this is a picture from a residential that we did so we guess like i said we guess you all kinds of things and for this residential it was a cluedo murder mystery that higher horizons ran um, and we got to go have a full three course meal with actors who were arguing throughout the meal and we had to try and figure out who'd murdered someone at the end of it. So that was really fun for us and it was really fun for the students as well. So you get to get involved in this kind of thing and get paid for it as well. So these are some of the things that people said they remembered most about Kiel when I was collecting some feedback for university graduation. Um, and I think the key message from this is always ask students what they think about their university. So the things that I remembered about Kiel was the squirrels because 
we all love squirrels um friends people lecturers scenery and this idea of the keel bubble which is what a lot of students would tell you and it's because of that community feeling that i said about before so if that's something that really appeals to you asking students about it they'll be able to tell you that this is what it's like to study there um and not all universities are the same so definitely ask these kind of questions because they will tell you the truth and if you don't like the sound of it, have a look somewhere else. Um, but all these different things that you need to think about can be really easy to sort of get through your mind if you ask people questions. So that is what I'm trying to say. Just ask as many questions as you can before you apply um, or after you've applied and you're looking around and a bit unsure. Just ask people what they think and what they'll remember most because they'll usually give you a really good answer. So this is a picture of my mum and my sister, which you might think what a weird thing to put in. Um, but this idea of what if I'm not ready for university is what I always put in. Um, so my sister is a third year student nurse um, and she has got a history degree as well as doing this nursing degree. But she really did not enjoy history at all. And um, she does her nursing degree whilst raising a child as well. So I always say, if you're interested in the future and you've got a family and you're not sure about what to do, always get in touch with um, teams at universities before you apply or before you enrol and be able to give you all the information you need. Because the only reason that she started her second degree was because she asked um, a money specialist about what funding was available and she found out that she could get a second lot of student loans to do her nursing degree. And she absolutely loves that. And my mum's on there because she is your classic archetypal awful student at school she did no work she needed two e's to become a primary school teacher at a level and she didn't get those so she became a nurse instead which is quite concerning because they thought you can't be a teacher but we'll let you be in charge of people's lives which always concerns me um but she absolutely loves her job as a nurse and it's something that she probably wouldn't have done um if she hadn't have taken a year out and waited to see what it was that she wanted to do in the future. She done all kinds of random things. Before that, she'd worked in a bakery, she'd worked in an Italian restaurant. So she did her um, diploma in nursing and then she waited a few years and then she did her degree when me and my sister were young. And then she did her master's degree after that when me and my sister were a bit older and now she's studying her doctorate. So like I said before about not everyone has the same journey my mum had a very strange journey where it's sort of all over the place and back on itself and all around the houses but she did it at her own pace so if you decide you're not ready now there's always going to be an opportunity in the future and then finally well not finally but nearly at the end life after graduation so i am at the end of my degree now and there's a few options that i was really interested in so postgraduate study was an option so doing a master's and um, still do a bit more history but i decided that wasn't really what i fancied um, because i want to do something a bit different so i have a job offer to be an nhs graduate management trainee which means that um it's the side of the nhs where the operations management happens or the strategy where they plan how services are going to be run and look at how services can be improved um, so that's something that i'm really excited to do and the skills that i've built up in my degree mean that i'll be quite ready to do that once i've had the additional um training and support that they give and finally i'd like to move away from home because like I said, I do enjoy living at home, but I would like that bit of independence that I haven't had from living away at university as well. Because every time I go to open the front door, my dad's there saying, where are you going? You're somewhere nice. It's like, yes, I am. Just let me leave the house without questions. So yeah, that'll be quite something I'm quite looking forward to as well. So thank you for listening. If you've got any questions about university, um, college, school, or just tips as well, Go onto the website highhorizons.co.uk slash ask and you can get in touch with one of the advisors. We'd really appreciate it if you gave some feedback as well. So if you um, give feedback on the link on the screen, that would be great. Thank you very much for listening. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, go onto that website and I hope that you found this useful. Thanks very much.